all right we're back and the first thing we're going to do is finish getting the artifacts from this thing all right greetings again starcom your custom is always welcome here we expect only serious inquisitions all right i went and got me some more antimantium hunted some stuff so particular artifact essentially lost by five dimensional entity in a wager uh colleen bots analyzing this visual representation of the object and plotting it into four dimensional space i conclude that this is a clean bottle theoretical three-dimensional aqualock of a molecular strip a real physical molecule model will allow us to study previously unknown areas of physics look at all them points bam and they have nothing available let's go ahead and save it and then let's see if we can't destroy the ship oh yeah look at us go All right, sorry, we got distracted. All right, let's let our energy get back up. And then we're going in for round two. And who are these people? Zor Guild. Got him. Zor Destroyer. Oh, that's an achievement. Shoot. Well, we're going to keep that achievement then. We're going to move on. Took all their junk. Hopefully, it doesn't bite us in the butt later. So, let's move on. The orb is now glowing violet. All right. No clue what the orb means, but I'm guessing the door has something to do with that area over there. We'll figure it out later. Let's scan this planet. Maybe we should go figure it out. I'm thinking we should. Let's go figure that out. What's going on over there with that orb? When we went south, it uh it went green. So maybe it's leading us to the stars over there. Alright, let's just keep on going. It's glowing green. Is there something on scanners? We're leaving the sector. Maybe it's over here. Now glowing yellow. Ooh. We got another space chunky thing. Let's go ahead and uh, pick up all this stuff. Can we examine this? Doesn't look like we can. But we did scrap all its parts. So let's head over here. Who are these? The orb is now glowing green again. Sentinels. Okay, so the orb doesn't have anything to do with them. Oh, oh, let's not shoot them. They're our allies. Uh, no, I didn't want you. I wanted to survey the planet. Huh. It's another swarm probe that seems to have met an unfortunate fate in encountering the surface of the planet at high speeds. Fortunately, it seems the angle it hit atmosphere slowed its descent enough that its data banks are mostly intact. They mostly consist of celestial survey data, but the team manages to recover a molecule of valuable information. So, neutronium core. Let's go check out that core. Now, discovery neutronium ore. This isn't a normal asteroid. It's a stellar core fragment with rich neutronium. It's too large for our tractor beam. We need to break it up first. Okay. Look at all that neutronium I'm getting. Bam. Done. 
It's a big piece of neutronium just for me. Alright, how's our orb doing? Is it changing colors again? Oh. What is this? Old freighter. Looks like this disabled non freighter is a non modular open hole design with quad feet and sublight drives. Interesting, but architect looks like when it was maglocks lost power, cargo went everywhere. Okay. I'll take all that cargo. Any other cargo around here? No? Any more? Alright, let's clean up the space trash. No anomalies. Did we check out the sun? Not sure if we did or not. Shields up. Uh, what is that? Is that an eye in this area also? Oh no, that's a friendly neutral person. Alright, check that out. The orb is now glowing yellow. Alright, no clue what that means. Let's go down here to this planet. Orb is now glowing green again. Interesting. All right, well, I've got no clue what that means. Shall I mean we're getting close to something? It's now glowing orange. Glowing yellow. Orange. It's now glowing red. Capsule. Close examination reveals that this life support pod designed to keep a single occupant alive in crowd stations for up to two years. Judging from the descended corpse inside, it's been here for quite a bit longer. Even at deep sleep, temperature slow degradation has left little but dust and some skeletal remains. It looks to be a hand clutches a small personal data device etched with the name Amu. The study, the sturdy device is still in excellent condition with its data crystal intact. In addition to various technical files, there is a single brief audio recording. Data crystal. The poor soul had a personal data device which had several terabytes of valuable Starcom technical data, but appears to be some kind of algorithm. And this, oh, I finished analysis. It's another algorithm related to the graph theory, but different from the previous. Whatever it is, it has some very advanced math behind it. In all the stories we read as children, if somebody made a wish, it would somehow go wrong. Didn't matter how careful they were or how noble their intentions. If you call upon a lamp, wizard, or imp to refile your dreams, you would come to regret it. As an adult, you'd think we know better, but no, we did it anyways. Recited the incarnation to the golden spear, not in words, but code and data. Now we ride on the, the gents back carried by singularity to the singularity. They really should teach more fairy tales in the synthetic synthesis curriculum. Okay. Investigation complete. And I think that was the orb. Let's see if we can't blow this thing up. Do we blow it up? Looks like it's still there. Yeah, we've uh we've taken it out of space where we can hit it. So if we put it on cruise, head back up here. We shouldn't get the uh, change in color anymore. Hopefully. Now that we done found that castle. Yep. The crystal's not changing colors. So let's jump back up here and continue on exploring. I don't remember if we got the sun, but we're going to hit it again. There's a, uh, a lot of stuff in this world. Or a lot of people. Just as the smuggler's message had said, the team finds a smooth lake of ice. At the prescribed coordinates, sonar scans pick up a faint signal below using thermal radiation radiators. The team is able to excavate down about 15 meters where they find a small lead coffer. Inside, they find a storm of artifacts, including what appears to be part of a sentinel. It's heavily damaged, but the neutronium leg and part of what must be a neural processor is intact. Neutronium and research. Okay. Let's not talk to these guys yet. Okay, we did talk to them, just to make sure. They are swarming, though. Ooh. Oh, that stupid thing. Oh, oh, 
The gas giant gets in the color from moderate quantities of mercury, obstinate in the upper atmosphere. Not so unusual in itself, but precise conditions show that it was formed gas tripped off its larger siblings. Well after something. Alright, no anomalies detected. Alright, let's set up that next. Why are they attacking me? Alright, let's reload. No anomalies detected. Okay. Class F planet. No anomalies detected. There we go. Shows that form gas tripped of its larger sibling well after the star system's formation. Alright, we got one more. They must be guarding that sentinel stuff. Alright, go down. And if they attack me again, we're going to uh, retaliate. Maybe it's because I ran into one because I was trying to get that probe. But if that's all it took. And I think we're done here. I think we are. They are very close to aggression with me. But they're going to have to get over it. All right, Super Earth. This massive terrestrial planet has similar composition and temperature to our own Earth, but at much larger scales, gravity would squash our lander into atoms. But we can still learn a lot from orbital observation. Oh, we got something here. We got a hostile and something. Just a scout. But what is this thing? Oh, reverse, reverse. Transport ship. This is another transport ship with the same design previous encounter. The drive engines are cold, but there are faint energy readings within. Again, there are hundreds of glass tubes filled with lobstrixels as a team refers to them. However, this time the reactor is still operation, but just barely. The team engineer guesses that it will fail soon if left alone. She believes that she could repair the system with 30 units of satellite. Alternately, life support sensors will very soon not have anything to keep alive if the reactor fails. Ooh, let's go ahead and repair it. After a few hours work, the team engineer is able to get the reactor back up to 90% peak output. She also implements a patch to the navigation code, which she almost positive will prevent software from software crash from recurring. Fingers crossed, the team returns to the eliminator. All right. So we're going to leave that ship to be, and hopefully they'll give us some good stuff later oh that pro where that pro go oh the stupid pro this is not the ship to collect probes I'll tell you that Let's see no anomalies moving on all right what we got here no surface detected so that ship is moving now it's moving straight east so I wonder what's out there. Who knows? Let's jump to the next sector. There it is. Ooh. What do we got here? No, I was trying to scan the planet. Okay, another ship. Let's see. This is another transport ship with the same design. Drive engines are cold, but there are faint energy readings from within. It is yet another lobster colony ship crippled by the same neurotic overflow bug. Team engineer takes the opportunity to lecture the rest of the team on importance of rigorous system testing procedures. Again, the system could repair with 30 or dismantled. Let's repair them. It's a few hours work. The team engineer is able to get the reactor back 90% peak output. So we'll send them on their way. And that one is heading somewhere it's heading somewhere so I think there's something in the top right corner that we'll get later now that we saved all them people they give us big rewards and then we'll blow them up no we ain't gonna blow them up well we might we don't know all right last planet in this sector oh we found one more despite abundant water and oxygen the lower atmosphere of this planet is so dense with clouds that Little light ever reaches the surface. A handful of the size atop a continental plateau are the only locations with enough sun to support life. According to the xenobiologists, the diversity of the plant life across the Meza is unparalleled in his experience. Well then. Well, well. 
So that's going that way. And we're going down to the right. We're going down to this sun now. Oh, there's two suns we haven't explored. So let's go down to this one. See what's going on. We did do this one, right? Yeah, that's the one we started at. So we'll hit up the sun first, like usual. But then I used to change my mind. Bam, one crew killed in action from running through the sun. He looked at it for too long. And this looks to be the only planet here. This planet has dozens of glowing craters, belching toxic gases. Scans reveal that they are not volcanic activity, but natural fission reactors. Then, usually dense rock focuses and releases neurons in certain areas, producing great quantities of heat. Amounts of cobalt, 60 or 80. All right, we're going to head to this one. Well, let's head back north first, take a jump, and then come down. Because it's closer. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, a little bit closer. And then we go and wrap it up. There we are. Bam. Get in there. Get in the hole. And then we'll cruise on down. All right, we're here. Where's that sun? See if we uh, lose another crew member. Nope, we're good. Oh, stop moving. No anomalies detected. Don't get ran into. All right, we got a survey. Looks like only three planets. Form of high altitude. From a high altitude location, the anomaly shows the clear markings of an old impact crater. Team sets the lander down on a eroded lip. Search of the large crater reveals modest amounts of titanium, artificial origin, but nothing else. All right, let's hit this last planet. Then we're going to head on home. While he's exploring. High altitude scans on approach to a large late Bronze Age civilization near the anomaly location. So the team lands on a good distance away and makes their approach on foot in accordance with Starcom policies of minimal intervention. Concealed in a thick foliage that lies on a river delta, they are able to observe a throng of aliens apparently worshipping in front of a large but incomplete pyramid. As they observe, an alien priest carrying a small object ascends the steps. He speaks. The object magnifies his voice in a way that must employ advanced technology. At least as surprising as what he says as interrupted by a universal translator. Come forth, visitors. We beseech you, make yourselves known. Do not be afraid. Okay. As the survey team emerges into open, the mass of aliens parts and the priest approaches. Quiet voice, he explains that the device he used to project his voice was recovered from a heaven ship which now lies at the center of their unfinished pyramid. Over the centuries, they have noticed that periodically visitors from the heavens arrive interested in examining the ship. They would be happy to allow the survey team the same privilege if an exchange survey team would use their magic to help move some of the large blocks needed to complete the pyramid from a distant quarry. It is, after all, a temple dedicated to magic sky visitors such as them, and frankly, the blocks are quite heavy. Sure. So, couldn't hurt. Takes the team only a few trips with the landers to complete the outermost layer of the pyramid. The aliens are delighted to give the team a tour of the heaven ship. It appears to be a small, unarmed vessel for a single life form, either a life pod or a scout ship. While it's not particularly advanced by Starcom standard, the team does find some interesting data in a flight control design. All right, it's time to head on home. So what we found was these ships were heading straight east. So I may go explore that and see what I can find when I'm offline. All right, we are back at the station. All right, limiter needs more volunteers, personnel, demerits can have expunge with Fourier analysis. Okay, we've read all that. We can use more crew. Nice, too. How's morale holding together? News of discoveries. We got news of your discoveries are giving anyone hope. Good, my morale's getting better. And he's played with interruptions. That's all for now.
research. We were looking at lasers last time. So we pretty much got everything except for the special abilities now. I'm not sure if I want to do attack drones later on or not. But I do know I want to mess with these lasers. Southern's acceleration increase recruitment speed. Nice. And damage lasers draw, no. There's a two instead of there, so we phase them just by the right amount. For the extended range of our lasers by 20%. That's what I want. By just the right amount. Okay, let's do that. And finally, increase the amount of energy this damage lasers can draw by additional 25. Bam. So that's it. Here's my ship, in case y'all been wondering. One, two, three, four, five, six shield generators. I want to get rid of that. Let's do a, uh, let's do one laser module. But yeah, here's a armor and then surrounded. So I might play with my ship a little bit more. Put on three habitat modules. I'm not sure yet. Maybe put a third one right here in the center. What's this? That's my bridge. So if we get rid of that, counts as two. Get rid of laser module. Module needs space on either side. So I'd have to get rid of them too. Then my whole ship would decollapse. So let me think on it and then I'll get back with y'all. Till then, y'all have a good one.